I'll talk uh, more about the first half because I think it's important to understand that this first half is a bit different from the last year's first half and a lot has actually happened in this first half. Uh, as we've been saying for some time, um, as we transition to the bank, our objective was to make sure that from a risk perspective, the balance sheet of the bank is protected against all known risks. And we've been saying for some time that our provisioning will therefore be appropriate uh, before the demerger and the bank becomes operational. Uh, we had actually mentioned even in the last quarter that there was a special uh, non-distributable reserve called 45IC, which uh, had about approximately 2,500 crores that we were going to utilize towards additional provisioning for the loan book. Uh, that is something that we have now actually done in the September quarter. Uh, so the provisioning has gone up uh, as an exceptional provision, one-time provision of approximately uh, 2,600 crores. A uh, large part of that is the 2,500 crore 45 IC provision that we've taken through the PNL. And um, that has resulted in uh, a loss in this first half of approximately 1,200 crores. If you would adjust for the exceptional uh, provision that we've made, our profit before tax first half of this year compared to first half of last year is up by about 1%. So when you look at it from an operational perspective, obviously the results are flat to up 1%. Mm -hmm. But when you adjust for the exceptional provision that we've made, uh, that is the loss of 1,200 crores. All right. Uh, gross NPS have also come in uh, higher than what the analysts on the street were expecting. You know, what exactly contributed to it? Which sectors uh, led to the rise in the gross NPS? It's largely on account of power again, which is why the additional provision of 2,500 crores has been made largely for coal and gas-based assets. Uh, there were three large accounts which contributed to the additional uh, NPA, but I would like to emphasize that the net NPA number is flat at 1%. So again, to demonstrate the fact that we are making adequate provisions and the net NPA number remains at 1%, which has been the case for the last six months. Right. And on that note, I have to ask you, going forward, what is the outlook on uh, NPAs and provisioning? Are we done? Apart from this one-time one uh, provision that was done, uh, you know, will we, uh, you know, what is the way forward from here on for uh, uh, NPAs as well as uh, the, the provisioning for them? What I can tell you is that the provisioning is uh, more than adequate. Uh, we've been conservative. These are provisions that we've made uh, that are not required by regulation, as we've said repeatedly. But it is more to make sure that all known risks on the balance sheet are adequately provided. Um, obviously, there are a lot of assets that are currently classified as uh, restructured assets or standard assets, right? Now, if there is some slippage in those assets that move into NPAs, uh, that could certainly be the case. But I think from a provisioning perspective for the assets that we currently have on the books, I don't envision any incremental provision because that was the objective of doing the one-time provision. But the ratios in terms of whether NPLs go up or not, that is a function of slippage. Mm -hmm. But we have taken into account uh, potential slippages and therefore made additional provisions. Right. When do you see the tide turning? Uh, you know, uh, do you see the, the tide turning when the economy picks up and reversals when it comes to provisions uh, going forward? We'll have to see how things evolve. I mean, obviously, there's a lot that the government is uh, is doing in terms of uh, gas-based assets and coal-based assets, including some of the um, issues that are working through the courts on tariff-related issues, etc. I think it will take, uh, you know, a few more months uh, for things to settle down and gain visibility on what, uh, if any, are permanent solutions uh, that can emerge for gas and coal-based assets, such that these assets longer term are, uh, are stable and uh, economically viable. Also quickly, a check on the IDFC bank listing. Are we on track for the number 6 listing? What is the issue price and the valuation that you expect uh, for this uh, listing? Yeah. So uh, we are on track for listing the bank on uh, 6th of November. As I uh, said earlier in my interaction with media, the book value of uh, the IDFC bank share is 39.11. The book value of IDFC limited share is 60.1. And currently, obviously, IDFC is trading X bank which means that once the bank lists, each IDFC shareholder had got one share of the bank as well. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the total value to IDFC shareholders would only be known mm -hmm. once they add the listing price of the bank shares to the currently listed IDFC shares in order to get to the combined value for IDFC shareholders. Okay, also give us an outlook on your loan book and your product mix. How will the loan book look, say, a year or two from now? 
this is something that uh, you know uh, we've said uh, earlier in terms of how we see the bank evolving and uh, and the mix uh, of the asset book in the bank we've said that largely it will continue to be uh, wholesale and commercial banking focused for the foreseeable future obviously we have opened 15 rural branches and will continue to open more rural branches our retail bank will get launched uh, more aggressively uh, from january onwards and that will also uh, pick up steam over the next several months but for the foreseeable future we are counting on the commercial and wholesale bank in terms of uh, building the book and uh, for profitability find us on facebook at facebook.com slash et now and don't forget to click the like button you can also follow us on twitter at et now live to stay updated with all our programming hit the subscribe button on our youtube channel by logging on to youtube.com slash user slash et now